Sports on the GCN Radio Network. Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Well, the architect uh, of uh, Obozo Care, Ezekiel Emanuel, Dr. Death, Dr. Death panel, he's come out and said, you don't need a doctor. You just need to go to a kiosk. Remember, Jakari Jackson went to Walmart and they had some robot literally to, uh, diagnose him with diabetes and say he was obese or whatever? Even though he's in great shape? I mean, that's the type of stuff that's going on here, ladies and gentlemen. Walmart Robo Doctor kiosk promotes Obamacare. Elysium like machine tells Jakari Jackson he's obese and should sign up for Obamacare. And so we're going to show that report along with that with Stefan Molyneux. Coming up in the next segment, here's a big story we're going to be covering. CIA employees face new inquiry amid clash on detention program. Turns out the CIA was spying on the Senate. Well, of course they were. So that's all coming up. Right now, let's go back to your calls on the IRS taking the fifth, even though they tell you you can't on your tax filings. But hey, uh, you know, four legs good, two legs better. Here on the animal farm, Joe in California, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hello, Alex. Hey, buddy. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing all right. Just doing a little radio show, you know. <laughs> awesome. Well, it's just another example of how it's one set of rules for them and a different set of rules for all the rest of us slaves. Well, slaves is the operative word because it is an unconstitutional tax. It is in the Communist Manifesto to have an income tax. The average American didn't pay an income tax till 1951. I mean, this is an alien thing. I'll never forget that Ron Paul was on CNN once and, what do we do if we get rid of the income tax? What will build the government? What run? He goes, this capital was built before we had an income tax. The income tax doesn't run the country. It goes to interest on the debt to the Federal Reserve. But, hey, don't let facts get in the way of it. Go ahead, sir. I'm sorry. Make a point. Well, you know, here's the thing. If they're going to continue to ignore us and implement things that we don't want, like an example, uh, Obamacare, uh, you know, you fully implement that when we told you we don't want it. We're not going to pay taxes anymore. Life, the lifeblood of this whole system is money. If they don't have money, they can't function. They can't send troops into attack if they don't have money to pay them. So cut them off. Very well said. No, I agree. And, and withdraw consent from the system, speak out against it, take our moral authority away from them, point out that literally we're run by offshore banks, and it's over. The occupation will begin to fall. They want us poor. The globalists admit this. They, they set the economy up to make it artificially scarce because they don't want us being, quote, uppity. I appreciate your call. By the way, Paul Watson was on for a long time last night on the Savage Nation with Michael Savage breaking down the whole Ukraine situation. It's an excellent in-depth uh, talk by two men, uh, one in the UK, one in uh, San Francisco, uh, California, uh, on what happened there. And it, it's a fascinating interview. I was listening to it this morning and was almost late to work. I wasn't really late to work, but I wanted to get here two hours early. I only got here an hour before showtime because I uh, listened uh, while I was getting ready this morning doing research uh, to the whole interview. And it's up on InfoWars.com. Uh, Paul Joseph Watson and... Michael Savage, uh, really discussing hardcore issues, breaking the left-right paradigm, drilling into the geopolitical machinations of the new world order. Stefan Molyneux, philosopher, futurist, best-selling author, uh, will be joining us, uh, hailing from Canada. He's going to be in studio in the next segment, a little bit in the next hour with us. But I'm sure we'll be able to talk about the IRS with you guys, Steve and Robert and uh, Fred and Dave and Mike and many others. We will be getting to all of you with him as well. But I'm going to first cover the statist religion, which he agrees is more dangerous uh, than a lot of people that are controlled by establishment religion. And again, I'm a religious person. I'm a, I'm a spiritual person, but, but I'm not an establishment religion person. But I don't get mad at folks that say, I can't see it, I don't believe it.
What I get mad at is atheists that tend to be, replace one thing with the state being God. And he agrees that those atheists are dangerous. Uh, Stefan is here in Texas going around on tour, best-selling author from Canada. And I wanted to get him in here to talk about his futurist view on the world and where things are going. But to also uh, go over some of the contemporary news that is unfolding in the world today. And then we also have government-run health care, uh, where now they promise no new regulations on doctors. Uh, it is 155,000 um, in the coming changes are vast. The number of codes will explode from 17,000 under the current system to 155,000 under the new one, according to the Centers for Medical and Medicine Services. And it's designed to totally destroy all free independent medical centers, doctors, you name it, all the smaller clinics and hospitals. It was written by big hospitals and foreign insurance companies and offshore insurance companies to totally shut everything down but them. It's a monopoly takeover to take you from 40 hours to less than 30 hours a week to not cover pre-existing conditions. Government being involved with corporations screwed up our health care. If you think it was already bad, it was the best 50 years ago here in the U.S., hands down, not debated. Royalty came here from around the world. Now it's going to be the worst. So uh, the Weekly Standard has those numbers. Uh, we're also going to be getting into the architect of it, Ezekiel Emanuel. We have the clip coming up. He says... Well, Get to it at the bottom of the hour. You don't even need a doctor. It's like Cuba. I mean, you've got plenty of doctors in healthcare. You just get a cane if your knees are bad or a cane if you're going blind. I mean, just a cane is the answer. So uh, everybody's like, I want the healthcare like England. You ever watch the parliamentary stuff on C-SPAN where they admit 18 months to get a, a broken leg fixed and stuff? I mean, wow, you folks, you're really in for a rude awakening. Just like we told you Obamacare would increase your prices. We're going to get into this move to disarm people as well, and the whole climate change push for taxation. Just a bunch of news with our guest, and Hillary Clinton calls Vladimir Putin Hitler, takes one to no one. Uh, this is all coming up with Stefan Molyneux, and again, uh, he is the founder uh, and host of Free Domain Radio, one of the largest and most popular philosophical shows in the world with more than 2,400 podcasts, 10 books, and 50 million downloads. That's an old bio. It's more than that now. And uh, he spread the cause of liberty, philosophy to listeners throughout the world. And I'm not going to go over his whole background, but prior to that, he was a thriving career and software entrepreneur and executive. In 2006, he left his work in the tech industry to devote his efforts to free domain radio. Now a self-identified full-time parent and philosopher or thought criminal, Stefan speaks regularly at liberty-themed events across North America and South America and he's author of two novels, uh, Revolutions and The God of Atheists, as well as eight nonfiction books on relationships, government, and religion. And uh, freedomainradio.com is his site. Again, I'm your host, Alex Jones. If you just joined us with Infowars.com, you can follow us on Twitter at Real Alex Jones. Before I go anywhere, I want to thank you for coming to join us. Oh, it's uh, my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. I'm actually uh, in town for the Texas Bitcoin Conference tomorrow. And uh, it's a real pleasure to, I mean, we've done a couple of shows remotely, so it's very nice to uh, be able to do a show face-to-face. Uh, -face. Well, it's good to have you here, brother. Now, uh, there's so much I want to throw out, but I want to cover the waterfront here. Yeah. Quantifying, because uh, I know you're a smart guy when it comes to history. That's why I like having you on, because I'm somewhat of a history novice myself. Looking at the wider spectrum, I believe undoubtedly we're in the bottom of a very decadent phase in the cycle. But coming out of that could be renaissance. I want to see, A, if you agree with that, B... What do you expect the statists, who are the biggest religion in the world, uh, versus one of the other largest religions, the liberty lovers, you know, who just are into humans and human empowerment, call it a religion if you want. point is humans tend to organize in that fashion. What do we do, and, and what's going to happen as the statists discover it's not delivering, it's a fraud, it's a lie? They tend to double down and call for 100% taxation. The taxing class tends to start engaging in tax fraud where you have a $3,000 truck and they say, we say it's worth 30000 That's not happening to friends of mine who have like 93 Chevy Silverados. That, uh, and, and then the state just says, sorry, pay that. We're not giving you your sticker. This is happening everywhere. What's going to happen as they double down historically? What comes out of that? What are they going to go through with the singularity stacked on top of it, with all the societal crises and all the th and super bugs and like everything coming to a head? What do you expect to happen? Well, violence, of course, is an addiction, and most addictions have to run their course. You know, most people who get involved in addictive behavior 
end up escalating and escalating and escalating. And our focus on trying to use government violence to solve complex social problems, I think you're right. It's in its death throes. I mean, how much further can it go? I mean, taxation, if you count debt and so on, and, and you count all this scaled taxes all embedded in your in your income and in, in your bills and in your regulations and so on, 60, 70, 80 percent, who even knows what it is? How much bigger, how much more powerful can it get? How much more debt can a country run into? How many more military bases can the United States have overseas? I think we're reaching the end mathematically and morally of this focus on trying to use the state to solve social problems. The idea that you can solve social problems voluntarily and peacefully and virtuously and cooperatively is an enlightenment idea that got eclipsed by the progressive movement, the communist movement, the socialist movement of the 20s, where a whole bunch of people said- Who claims the moral high ground. Yeah, yeah, claim the moral high ground. We can solve poverty, we can solve illness, we can make everybody educated, we can uh, teach the poor. And now, I mean, the whole thing is completely unraveling. You don't